You've finished gagging yourself damn near to death with the cinnamon challenge. You've recovered from the body shock of the ice bucket challenge, and you finally returned from the hospital after doing the Tide Pod challenge. What is the next level of challenge for you overly suggestible millennials out there? At CCW Labs, we have worked day and night calculating the next challenge level, and we believe you're about to meet your match, introducing the Grow the Hell Up Challenge. Dad, what do you mean I need to find a job? Well, sweetheart, you're 22 years old, you're not in college, and you still live with us, so I... Oh my god, I can't do this! Matt, I'm gonna have to write you up. Why, boss? Your attendance is awful. You need to show up for work on time and stop taking days off when you're not sick. Oh my god, I can't do this. Welcome to American Bake. How can I help you? I have a balance of negative $300. How did that happen? It looks like you bounced several checks. I suggest balancing your checkbook, or at least looking at your balance before making purchases. Oh my god, I can't do this! Here are things you, a grown-ass adult, can do that does not require government handouts, pity parties, or forcing the rest of us to overpay for your damn insurance. Use your damn turn signals. Take responsibility for your own damn actions. Spay and neuter your damn pets. Spay and neuter your damn selves. Write a damn book. Plant a damn garden. Learn a damn trade. Realize that the damn earth revolves around the sun, not around you. Please submit your Grow the Hell Up Challenge videos to us at counterculturewise.com. We're waiting. This is CNN, constantly nurturing numbskulls. Welcome to the CNN Special. I'm Chris Cuomo. And I'm Don Lemon. What was supposed to be the second debate between the front runners for President of the United States became two separate town hall meetings broadcast simultaneously. The town hall with Democratic candidate Joe Biden was hosted by George Stephanopoulos. Let's watch some of the highlights. I'm so honored to be here, Mr. Vice President. Let's get started. What will you do to eradicate the effects of the evil orange man's tyrannical rule once you are the duly elected president of the United States? I really don't think it's a good idea to give you too much detail. Oh, thank you so much for that insightful answer, sir. Now, you and your wonderful running mate have both said in the past you were in favor of packing the Supreme Court to counteract the dangerous shift in balance to a conservative court and the resultant absolute loss of every single woman's right to choose for all of eternity. Would you be willing to go on the record right now and say you support this court packing we so desperately need right now? No! Mr. Vice President, that was a fantastic answer. I can't thank you enough. Well, Chris, I think that gives our audience a great insight into our next president. Don't you agree? Absolutely. And I love how George didn't back down from pressing him on these and other important issues. After all, it's only fair to know what to expect with the Biden presidency. True that. Let's move on to the other town hall. Donald Trump's town hall was hosted by Savannah Grumpy. Let's listen in on some highlights, if you want to call them that. Let's just get into it. You have said that you disavow white supremacist groups, but you haven't done it even once in the last four hours. So, would you be willing to disavow white supremacists? How many times do I have to... During the last debate, you told the Proud Boys to stand down and stand by. Was that secret code to the white supremacists? What are you talking... I just can't understand why you won't disavow white supremacists. But Savannah... Since you are clearly not going to answer my question, we will move on. Why won't you talk to anyone about your tax returns? Not again. How many times... Who do you owe $421 million to? Clearly Savannah wasn't up to the job. This was a softball game, nothing more. Yeah, she really let him ramble on and on, spewing his racist vitriol for the world to see. On the positive side, this gives America a clear choice. Thanks for watching this special report. This is CNN. Contrite, never, never.
Welcome to Counterculture Wise, a Stormcap production. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the hosts, our guests, and the dog, and do not necessarily reflect the views of any of our platforms, our advertisers, or any other dog. <laughs> you listen today, please remember, we are so much more than a podcast. All of our stories we discuss are linked in our show notes on counterculturewise.com. Visit there for commentary, guest photos and links, animations, and fun merchandise. If you have a story idea or would like to be a guest on our show, contact us via our website. You can also follow us on Twitter, Gab, Instagram, Facebook, and all over social media, where we'll post memes, cat pics, and commentary that gets us booted off on a regular basis. If you're listening live, be sure to join our chat on Spreaker. If you're listening dead, please stop voting Democrat, but enjoy the show anyway. And a nice and windy Sunday to you. Although it's not windy outside, I wish it were. It's windy inside. We do apologize for any sound you hear. It is 97 degrees outside and probably about 247 degrees inside. Maybe even 247.5. Thanks to our crappy landlords, but we have a whole series about them. (laughs) Anyways, folks, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a beautiful, fabulous, fantastic Sunday. And so far, it's been a really good day. We had a fun time at church, got to love on a lot of people that we just adore, had a nice interlude at one of our favorite food places, uh, played with the dogs, got the show ready, and all together, nice day. And Jim, of course, got like a six-hour nap, so hopefully he'll be up for the challenge today. I will be <laughs> up to the challenge. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, see, so well, I'll keep splashing him with water, because it is like a billion degrees in here. Yeah, hey, folks, matter. you know... While you're listening to the sound of a voice, before I introduce you to the man on the mic, drop everything. Ouch, ouch. Oh, I Head on over to counterculturewise.com, where we'll be updating our website a little bit here. And like, share, subscribe, do all the things. Tell people about our podcast if you enjoy it. Tell people about our podcast if you hated it and you want them to rage listen. We'll take whatever we can get. Support us, you know, help us buy a air-conditioned room, and who knows what will happen after that. So do be sure to hit all the buttons, whether you're listening live right this minute, or if you're listening after the fact, seriously, like, share, subscribe. Really, really helps us. That would be swell. Oh, and buy our crap. All right. Well, here on the mic with me are the dulce... Oh, wait. I should introduce myself. You might want to do that, yeah. I'm Melanie Hope. I am your hostess with the mostest here, and my co-host with me across the room sitting in front of the AC, actually blocking the AC entirely, is, well, he's usually my best friend, but right now he's, he's blocking the AC. And my husband, <laughs> he's trying to scooch on it. It doesn't matter. Okay. And my husband and my co-host and... yeah, my sweet baboo, Mr. James Lotus! I, uh... I probably should have told you this before the show started, but I sold our vacuum cleaner. Look, it was just gathering dust anyway. Oh, ha, ha, (laughs) ha. Well, sadly, that is true. I don't think you pulled that thing out in months. Now, now. (laughs) Take a joke and ruin it. (laughs) Well, we have a lot to talk about, and um, yeah, boy, we we're just going to be really, really honest because mm-hmm. there's it's we're in this weird place where it's some cultural vortex. Or it something. really is. It's just and, the and, weirdest and the, thing. The bent that these people are taking, we know this is happening, and it's happening worse now than ever, right. thanks to the cabbage in chief that just can't get enough kids to sniff. And, you know, this movie could do a lot of good for a lot of people. Well... And instead, the press is just... Lefties... 
I can't, I can't, for the life of me, I can't figure out what their motivation is. Yeah. I'll well, let you start. Stepping, stepping back from it, we're, we're talking about the hit movie, the surprise hit movie, uh, Sound of Freedom, which is based on a true story um, about a man who works for the government who is trying to, well, he busts pedophiles. That's his job, but one of his co-workers asks him, have we actually rescued any of the kids? And and that uh, that gets him started on a journey, and it's an amazing story about something that Melanie alluded to at the beginning of the show. This is, um, it's disgusting. It's child trafficking for sex, and... I'm going to just give my review first. It's going to be shorter than Melanie's, I'm pretty sure. I thought it was an excellently made movie. I think that the writing was great, the casting was great, the cinematography was really good, the sound quality was iffy, it was you know, quiet at times. I don't think it's times. the movie's fault, but we'll be talking about that yeah. too. Um, I And this movie is spreading like wildfire as far as popularity, and... This was a movie that was made five years ago. We'll discuss why the delay in a, in a little bit here. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was well made. There were a few moments where I had to sit back and go and, and you know, suspend disbelief in my own mind, but I still would give it like four and a half stars. I thought it was a really uh, out of five, by the way. I, I don't want to say four and a half stars out of <laughs> 27 20. or yeah. something. <laughs> so I... I it was a very well well done movie. Um, I applaud Jim Caviezel for taking such a stand and having a non Hollywood movie beating what was supposed to be a gigantic blockbuster, but is that is just barely scraping in and will make a teeny weeny well actually won't make a profit at all just because of the cost of producing it. Well, and it, it was a movie that didn't need to be made, whereas. Sound of Freedom needed to be made. Yeah. Well, I, I have a little bit of personal insight into this. First of all, because I worked at a nonprofit organization that dealt with children. Right. Um, and this was many years ago, but I've also been tapped into that. Uh, that's one of the things I hate the most about the current resident is. You know, you get called racist if you don't want children imported and abused. And I'm, I'm not sure why that's a stance that people want to take. I, I don't think that we should be trafficking people across the border, legally or not. Well, there's no way to do it legally. Um, and I'm sick of being called a bigot because I don't want to see these people. I mean, how many children did he lose? It was like, Biden has lost how many I, I don't know. It's, it's like 80,000. I mean, it's um, he's literally brought foreign children over the... Um, yeah, I was trying to find it, but if you type in lost children, all you get is a bunch of nonsense about his, his son, which... And he's pretty lost, but anyway. Well, no, I'm talking <laughs> about the other one. Oh, Bo. But yeah, he actually lost um, migrant children... Like, they just don't even know where they are. They're, they're turning them over to strangers. Unaccompanied, um, five, so, let's see. Oh, well, this is just saying they, they've apprehended an average of 5,000 undocumented Im illegal immigrants per day, including about 500 unaccompanied, unaccomp uh, my God, unaccompanied, unaccompanied children <laughs> per day. And there are 16 thousand migrant children that they don't know where they are just disappeared well this movie i think tells us a lot about where they are um it's it's kind of terrifying and i can't believe that <sighs> that they've turned it into this weird conspiracy thing and then of course the other personal thing is that i have met jim caviezel i have a picture of me with him it was many years ago but and it was right after the passion. Very down to earth, kind, compassionate, faithful man. Um, it's hard to find them in Hollywood, you know. 
Well, it, that's probably why he's not in Hollywood. So yeah. I'm just blown away that these people are are taking the stand of supporting pedophiles and acting like it's some weird conspiracy theory of a story that is based on a true story. Now, of course, there's going to be a little bit of cinematography. There's going to be... It's going to be a little embellishment because... Watchable. I mean, like every movie ever. what did you actually think of the film? I thought it was... Sending it all aside. Well, I I pretty much cried through the whole darn thing. I'll I'll be honest. I'm I'm a witness. She did. I pretty much cried through the whole thing. And and I think part of it is because, you know, they're babies. They're They're just babies. And I know this happens. I mean, for God's sake, they called us conspiracy theorists for how many years? And yet Epstein was a thing. Mm-hmm. The island exists. Mm-hmm. This woman got charged and went to jail but had no customers. Not a single one. Not mm-hmm. a single one of these customers. She trafficked thousands of children to nobody, apparently. And we're supposed to just sit back here and, and be called names and conspiracy theorists over this movie that has basically already been proven in court. But... They're not doing anything about it because most of them are the ones that would get arrested from, you know, the, the, the Prince of Wales on up to the White House. And why are we letting this happen? Why are we letting this happen? And it gets even weirder, you know, as they're, they're saying that it's QAnon related and this and that. Okay, you know, nobody bought into the QAnon nonsense. That was just a, a, a distraction to keep people quiet. If anything, the QAnon idea was a lefty idea to make us all look like morons, and, and those who bought into it, yeah, I'm sorry, you look like morons, okay? Are you still waiting for Trump to be put back into office? I mean, did you honestly think that was going to happen? I mean, come on, people. Come no, on. That's not how it works. And Trump didn't even do the things he said he was going to do when he was in and, office, but that's a different and subject. And no one was even... no. Trump was not even mentioned in this movie. No. No, but no. Nope. The only, At all. Only, only the uh, wasn't Department of Homeland Security. Trump The Department wasn't of mentioned. Homeland Security was mentioned because that's where the, that's that's where, where the guy worked. That's where the guy yeah. worked. But so, that, yeah, this wasn't that, political at all. It was even filmed reason, on the property. But how can you make <laughs> the, the torture and sale of children a political thing? How it, does that even become political? I mean, seriously, how is this the it's left versus right to thing? It's appeal to your basic human decency to do something well, about and it. And I'm beginning to wonder if these people just don't have it. They just don't have basic human decency. Although I will say, it is trending right now on Twitter. Yes, it is. But I'd be interested in seeing what, so, what, uh, what they're saying. So, interesting fact about this movie. Uh, 20th Century Fox was all geared up to released this movie five years ago. Yes, that's how long it took to reach the theaters. But then Disney Company, the company that has Walt spinning in his grave, purchased 20th Century Fox, as most people know, um, gave the Fox name to to the TV networks and just changed the name and then dropped this movie like a hot potato. So it sat there for a long time and finally a company that specializes in spiritual ba- spirit based movies they they purchased the rights to it it might even be Jim Caviezel's company I honestly don't know it, it but, was basically a GoFundMe yeah. between him and the other guy so yeah and now Disney who, they it's the this uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the first Indy Jones movie to be released by the Walt Disney Company and it's barely as of now it's barely made its initial investment back which is never a good sign for a this this movie cost 240 million dollars let let that sink in 240 million dollars and they're just now making it back and, and it wasn't after a needed. week and a half it wasn't needed I mean well we I mean that's, that's kind of the point of movies usually is that they're not Needed. Well, just I mean, it wasn't free. needed as far as the franchise is concerned. Why yeah. can't they write something new? Why? Why are we throwing these billion-year-old boomers into these old movies that? I don't know. Wait for next week because there is a ginger snaps coming up. Yeah, next she's week. gonna. She's gonna. You. You are gonna not. <laughs> 
Your hair will blow back. <laughs> Mine was blown any. back, as you can plainly <laughs> see. Actually, you can't. I'm bald now, okay? That's just for the... So, uh, this needs to be read. There bald. are 40.3 million trafficked persons globally today, and 25% of them are children. Um, this comes from the International Labor Organization and the Chi Child Liberation Foundation. Approximately 350,000 children are reported missing every year in the U.S. alone. Of that total, an estimated 100,000 are being trafficked that we know of for sure. Child sex trafficking has been reported in all 50 U.S. states. That just makes me sick to my stomach. The 2021 20, Federal Human Trafficking Report stated that 57% of U.S. human trafficking victims were minors. And this is the one thing that Trump was going hard mm -hmm. against. He actually was doing good work in this, and Biden got in and just erased it all. Made he it erased everything Trump did, regardless of its value. Yeah. It's just the United States is one of the top destinations for human trafficking and is among the largest consumers of child sex. What is wrong with you people? Human trafficking is a $150 billion per year business, more, more than the NFL, the NBA, MLB, and NHL combined. Yipe. I did not know that. Seriously. And it has eclipsed the illegal arms trade. My God. So what are they doing? What are the lefties doing? They're writing things like this. Sound of Freedom, the QAnon-adjacent thriller seducing America. They're trying to use, first of all, you guys are the ones who invented QAnon, all right? You guys are the one that invented that. Nobody's believing in that. It's not even a thing anymore, okay? But to sit here and say that this movie has anything to do with your little fantasies of, of QAnon is ridiculous. So let me ask before you continue. You're about to read an article that was a review of the movie. I'm just curious to see how long the rant goes before the elements of the movie are even discussed as far as the casting, the story, any of that. Because you gave me the first three paragraphs and I didn't hear anything about the actual quality of the film itself. It was just going on and on and on and on and just making the, the writer sound like a self-important twit. Yeah, and she is. Of course, she's a liberal white woman. So, yeah. It, and that's basically what it is. Well, now they're saying that this is by Charles such and so, but at the bottom it shows Betsy Reed. Oh, she, I guess, is the editor. Okay, so it's a liberal white guy. So, probably a, a pedo himself. Well, I'm not going to say that. Not, now. Well, I don't know, but let's see what he has to say. Since, I mean, well, okay, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk it back a little bit because I know that the writers don't get to write the headlines. That's so true. So let's see if they the headline matches up to the actual article because most people don't even read past that. The sub-headline is Jim Caviezel stars as a hero trying to stop child traffickers in a paranoid new movie turning into a surprise box office hit. Paranoid? Really? Type the word Sound of Freedom into Twitter. Decent people who wish to live good, happy lives should under no circumstances actually do this. And the search will yield dozens of triumphant reports crowing about the improbable victory of a film by that title over the likes of Indiana Jones at the box office this week. That's not strictly speaking accurate. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny had already been out for five days, the first three of which out-earned Sound of Freedom's opening day take when the new independent thriller came to theaters on Tuesday. But for a fleeting moment this past 4th of July, while the intended audience of Indy's latest outing... Okay, so he goes on and on and on to talk about, well, it's not really true that they made that money. And, you know, it was on the 4th of July when people weren't really going and blah, blah, and by blah. By the way, okay. I think this is in a British keep going, rag, The Guardian. Keep going, keep yeah. going. This is in The Guardian. Yeah. Um, uncommon, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Liberal, liberal Sodom of Manhattan. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Eight, okay, so he's still talking about the studio. Money, network, Buddhism, far-right fringe. So far, nothing about the movie. I'm in the fifth paragraph now. Oh, here we go. Caviezel stars as special agent Tim Ballard, a Homeland Security Investigations operative who really did work for the state busting up child trafficking rings for more than a decade. And this is just such a perfectly lefty thing. Or so he claims. 
allegedly. Neither confirm nor deny the real Ballard's employment history. Well, yeah, because if he saved is. one, it was worth it. What's the matter with his ding dongs? <laughs> That's one that got away. Even if he did not literally have the face of Christ, Ballard would still exude an angelic aura as he gently hoists dirty faced moppets out of peril with the gravely uttered catchphrase, God's children are not for sale. This guy's a monster. He's acting like rescuing children is, is like <laughs> saccharine kitsch. I mean, this guy is a monster, and he gets paid to write this trash. The Sound of Freedom, he leads a unit in the Sound of Freedom. He leads a unit to Columbia and eventually goes rogue on a single-minded quest to locate and liberate the still-missing sister of a boy he managed to save from sex slavery. The defenseless siblings are drawn into the nefarious clutches of their abductors in the stomach-churning opening sequence, which clinically walks us through the steps by which a glamorous and implicitly trustworthy woman poses as a modeling scout to round up the most apple-cheeked prospects and separate them from their parents. In a montage that plays like a John Bonet Ramsey fan cam, she strokes our horror by primping the youngsters with red lipstick and suggestively must up hair. And yet a coating of plausible deni deniability covers a film that takes care to be the most anodyne version of itself, all while giving those in the know just enough to latch onto. The traffickers are anonymous foreigners, not really, a couple more Americans, mentioned as rebels in an unspecified regional con. Okay, one of the traffickers was. One. The rest were Americans. Um, in an unspecified regional conflict with no connection to the alleged Clinton crime family. So now he's bringing Clintons into it. Though the title card at the end points back to America as a hub for the $150 billion business of exploit. Point. Well, it told one story. Okay, this guy completely missed the point. I'm not even going to read the rest because it's garbage. He completely missed the point. In fact, I'm wondering if, he if he's just writing this entire thing based on the white white sheet and didn't mm -hmm. even watch it. Because it seems to me like he didn't even watch it. Mm. So he, he uses words like zestier and scare and, Anna, what's and it? <laughs> I mean... I hope you appreciated this article. No, it's absolute garbage, Betsy Reed. You need to rein in your terrible writers. Um, Caviezel's final statement double crystallizes the nonetheless foggy states. If you're not with us, you're with them, whoever they are. Yeah. Yeah. If you are pro-pedo, you're not with us, buddy, and I don't want you with us. I mean, these are people that, if they can't murder their children, even after birth, they want to <laughs> cut off perfectly healthy body parts in the name of, of what? These people are sick. They're twisted. And For you know, they're, they're trying to say, oh, they're, they're QAnon. And I love it. Every time they write this thing about, oh, all the Republicans, uh, Republicans are QAnon, wah, wah. They show, like, you know, three people. With a Q sign, I mean, no. Most, I bet you most normies that voted for Trump didn't even know what QAnon was. No. or never even heard of it. Yeah. You know, that, that, that was a 4chan thing. It was something that, you know, people on the internet were into. I bet you, you, if you were to go even today to a Trump rally where you can literally get hundreds of thousands of people at where Biden can barely get two in his basement... Most of them wouldn't even know what QAnon was, or they would just know it was some silly thing that the lefties made up to try to make us look bad. And that's how most it's, people it's kind see of, it. It's a fringy thing, anyway. No, yeah, nobody. And, not, and and to try to you to, can believe some of the things that that QAnon espouses without actually believing in QAnon. I mean, well, the thing is, you know, the whole oh Pizzagate. Here's what they do, and it's just like and Chuck has an example of this tonight too. Okay. This is what they do. Well, we didn't actually find children at this specific pizzeria so the whole pizza conspiracy thing about them using these keywords and whatnot to traffic children is, isn't true you guys are insane well no the entire thing was proven true yeah it just didn't happen at that stupid one pizza parlor but i mean snopes is, is famous for this well yeah. you know and like i said chuck is well, going to well, have an well, example of it so you know? Yeah, I mean, people of goodwill, let me put it this way. 
I posted on Facebook, see this movie. And if you want to see it and you can't afford it, let me know. There's a big, big pay it forward movement. Yeah, there's a gigantic pay it forward. If you want free tickets, forward, so you can get them. My and we're point gonna, is, we're going to post the the um, the link so that you can get free yeah. tickets. My, the point I wanted to make is, people of all political stripes gave me a thumbs up, and it's not about me getting thumbs up. It's that people of goodwill of all different political standing realize this is a serious issue and needs to be addressed. And this film is the first thing I've seen in a long time to actually bring it to us, let us know how it is, and appeal for help. You know, it's it's just that simple. I also wanted to point out that I thought the casting, once again, was wonderful. Um, some of the best child acting I've ever seen. Yeah. I've, se I've seen child actors ruin movies. Yeah, this little boy, he really, really hits you in the feels. Yeah. The two, yeah, the two main kids, the, the boy and the girl, they were, yeah. they were amazing. They're absolutely amazing. Any last thoughts? <sighs> I just... Other than go see the movie, okay? Yeah, well, <laughs> Mel Gibson backs it, um, Elon Musk backs it, People just go see the movie, and it's I mean, worth your time. On and Twitter, you will it's, enjoy it's like it. you know, you, you've got the people saying, "Oh, this is stupid," and QAnon, and blah blah blah, and then there's other people saying, "You know, who doesn't like movies about pedophiles and child traffickers? Pedophiles uh, and child, child traffickers. traffickers." Yeah. You know, by the way, it's an ex even, taken on its own terms. Even if you take all the political crap away, it is an enjoyable movie. It's full of action, really good acting. Bring your uh, bring your um, hearing aids, but it's it's a very good movie. Um, yeah, that's the other thing we need to talk about. Okay. So, the, we that when he said bring your hearing aids, we're not joking. Um, we were trying we'll everything we could just to thing. hear the movie. The sound was down so low. We could hear the movie in the next theater over better mm -hmm. than we could hear the movie we were sitting in. Now, I was thinking, well, it's because I'm old and I need closed captioning or something. But it turns out there's a huge, like we're talking 166,000 people on Twitter are talking about this. This guy, I don't know who he is, but he says, my experience with the Sound of Freedom at the AMC theater. Now, I am not saying AMC is the one doing this because we didn't see it at yeah, AMC. Yeah, we saw it at a Regal Cinema. But so yeah. many people are having the same experience mm -hmm. that while I don't think AMC should be blamed because I don't think it's the actual theater even though they do have on their website that they're all about transing the kids. So that's something that's literally on the AMC website. Um, but he says he thinks that pe the theaters are trying to make viewer experiences uncomfortable and, and underwhelming. So this guy, he said the volume was turned all the way down to nearly inaudible. He had to contact the manager to adjust the film twice. And so he was just asking our other people having this experience. I was like, oh, my God, I thought it was just me. Um, people are saying there's no posters or ads, but that was by design. They didn't want to use money for that. They wanted it to get out by word of mouth. And keep that in mind. This thing grossed as much as Indiana freaking Jones with no posters and no ads. You know? Suck it, Disney. Suck it. Um... This person says they were in uh, Pennsylvania. The air was barely working, and the sound from the theater next door was louder coming through the walls. That's what ours was. Um, this person, um, yeah, people are posting dumb stuff. Why, why are you posting this under this guy's tweet? It's, it's like they're posting, like, Trump burgers and stupid crap that has nothing to do with it. Um, I was really hoping for answers to this tweet. Won't let me into it. Anyways... Just thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are saying, uh, you know, our tickets were revoked. They canceled it because they said that that particular theater, the AC, was out. Um, it's just too many instances for it to be a kawunky donkey. Mm -hmm. You know, it's too many pl times that this is happening in a row on this specific movie for it to just be a kawunky dinky. I also wanted to uh, say that one of the 
one of the best things in the mo about the movie is not wasn't the movie itself for me. Um, I walked in and the trailers were rolling, and trailer after trailer after trailer were ab about these upcoming faith-based films. A lot of them were uh, same studio that eventually wound up releasing this movie. There were others as well, but they were all family-oriented. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell you Sound of Freedom is family-oriented. It's definitely not a family film. And I think that's something that gets past people to think that a faith-based film... And I used to think the same thing. It had to have all clean language, no negative situations. You know, a little girl is trapped in a well and they free her and that kind of stuff. No, this is a very gritty, realistic movie. But they did something that cuties didn't. Okay, so cuties, which got praise and everything. Of course it did. You know, they actually sexualized these children. They did crotch shots. They had these girls, 10 and 11 years old, twerking and really, really sexually suggestive. There's even a whole, because I actually watched it because I thought people were making it up. There's a whole sequence where she's running around in her underwear and being sprayed water. She's 10 years old, you freaks. And, and they, they're, they, they're saying, oh, it's a coming-of-age movie that, that shows that, you know, you shouldn't do this to children. That's like shooting a puppy in the head to say that violence against animals is bad, okay? Yeah. This movie didn't do that to these children. Well, what it was alluded to. It was suggested. It was never shown. These children were not put it in was harm's way. These for children the were kind of the brutal brutality of it, it was ta the brutality was tasteful. I, I don't know if that makes sense. It was just... They didn't. You knew didn't what was happening. Yeah, you knew what was happening without them children, beating you over the head with it. Right. Those um, children were not harmed. Those children were not put in the situation like they were with cuties. Right. So they, they managed to, to. You knew what was going on. You knew what was happening behind, you know, closed doors or whatever. In other but words, they, they didn't assume you were stupid. But they didn't show you, right. which means that these children didn't have to be, the actor children didn't have to be put in the scenarios like they did with cuties, which right. was disgusting. I will never, but ever pay for Netflix again. The, the, main, the, the main point I'm making is this is just the beginning. I think that faith-based films like this one, Jesus Revolution, um, several others that have come out over the last uh, year or two that were independently made. You know, I, I know that, that Jesus Revolution was released by a semi-major studio, but... The point is, these kind of movies are making a comeback, and there's a reason. People are mm -hmm. hungry for this now. Yeah. And this movie came, even though it was made five years ago, it was released at the right time. There are some really good movies that are being made, and it's about darn time. And you know what? I am going to pay to see every stinking one of these in a theater, even though I don't like going to theaters. They're, they're too cold. They're too expensive. People are obnoxious and rude, but I want these companies to make <coughs> money. I want these companies to make money. So, and also beware of any reviews by news people working for organizations that are also owned by Disney or Warner or whatever. Just reject them out of hand. It's totally stupid. Uh, we'll have to pardon our sound manager here she barked so she is on her way somewhere else we strive to be a professional organization here and to make us more professional i'm going to ask one more time to please go to our website if you like what you hear we love doing this for you we want to enlighten people we want to entertain uh, you want us to continue to do the holy crap segments which are becoming extremely popular of, on and of themselves, and also our cat sketches and all the other stuff, please um, go to our website. Tell your friends about us. I think that there's something in this for everybody. I know we have a particular political bent, but we don't, you know, it's not something we harp on all the time. We just like to entertain. Yeah, and we do. Lighten. We harp on it. <laughs> yeah, we do. I'm a harper. <laughs> not a harpy. I'm, I'm not on the view, but <laughs> the, that you wouldn't last five minutes on the view. You, no, you would they eviscerate. No, no, last no, five that's minutes what I'm on the view. You would eviscerate all 27 of them. How many, how many hosts are there on a given day? I think five, I don't six. Know. They anyway. all look the same to me now. I mean, yeah. ooh, that's racist. Anyway, 
the uh, yeah, it, it's it's crazy. Joy so, nuts in but the yeah, end. she she would she would rip them all to shreds, and there'd be nothing but bleeding bodies and all over the stage. Put, and, you know, little soft bully, you know, da daddy, daddy's dead whiny baby, you know, so-called Republicans who aren't. They're rhinos. If you got to put a hardcore Trump supporter, just to use that as an example. Well, the thing is, what they do is they don't let you get a word in edgewise. Yeah, they they, they will not let you their speak. I, their idea because they of, know for a fact that their ideas are moronic and they can't support them. So yeah. if they let anybody get a word in edgewise, they would lose well, the entire they're the, show. Well, they're they're cut it off just, artists. It just scares me that people actually watch it. Yeah. No, lots of people watch it. It's it's that shows like that are why soap operas aren't on anymore. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Watch a rerun of Hazel? You know, just... <laughs> Chat says I prevented a murder today. I exercised self control, Melanie, after being on the View. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's about it. We love our chat, people. Join our chat. Oh, this is my favorite meme of the day. It's called Pedocillin, and it's basically hollow points. <laughs> a <laughs> bottle of hollow points. We love haven't it. gone shooting in the longest time. No, I, we really do need to do we, that. We haven't done that since we moved here. I, yeah, that's true. Just, here, here we moved to Texas and never and once never take once our guns out. I need to take a lesson on how... Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm right-handed but left-eyed, so I'm kind of weird. Usually it's both of the same, but I've got. It was just right hand a, bit left a genetic, a, a genetic error. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Anyway, <laughs> we'll figure that out someday. So yeah, do do go see the movie. I highly recommend it. It's worth your time. It. And, Take and someone to it, share it, and don't let. I mean, come on! Wasn't it just uh, CNN just recently had to fire a guy because he was. Engaging yeah. in illicit things with with children. Yeah, and, and we're supposed to take you know, oh, oh QAnon. It's like, how this many pedos has CNN, CNN had to fire just the this child year? noodling network? Seriously, how many <laughs> child diddlers has CNN had to let go just this year? I don't know. I there is a way if you really want to see this movie and cannot afford it. You can go, there's a website, I think it is at angel.com, which is the uh, film studio put it out, where you can get free tickets. So don't don't let your financial situation <laughs> stop you from seeing it. I, I thought it was a wonderful movie. Dave says, you're, you're not weird because he's the same way. I shoot pistol right-handed, but rifle left-handed. He said he knew there was something he liked about you. <laughs> it was well, me. There's something I'm, about I'm me to like, like about almost him. everybody. <laughs> There, I, yeah, I don't know. Because I'm looking, I'm looking at this um, <laughs> trans pride thing in London going on right now with the... Wait a minute. June's over. Yeah, Go home. This guy served 30 years for attempted murder and kidnapped. And he cut off his testicles while he was in jail so he didn't have to deal with being a man. Was also convicted while in prison for attempted murder of another inmate. And now he's on microphone in a dress wearing the pedo cape the pedo flag as a cape, holding an Antifa flag and shouting out that women need to be brutalized and and this is what this is what people are taking seriously. They think okay. this is a good thing. Forehead, bullet, goodbye. Now now I'm, now I'm, we don't condone violence in this house. We don't? Oh okay, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't. That's not right. saying I wouldn't clap or whatever, but Yeah. Th these are not human. This is, these are not human beings. I mean, we were warned. Sorry, I shouldn't have said We were that. warned that this was going to happen, and we just sat back and let it happen. We just sat back, let it happen. Anyways, enough sad things. Enough. Yes, we have, uh, we have dwelt on this, as do, I thought we probably would for quite some time. Do, do go see it. Uh, go, do see go see it. it. See independent movies. Just in general, go see independent movies. If you are a Christian, and even if you're not, go see faith-based movies. You'll learn a few things. I've seen a couple this year, and they, they were really, really good. Yeah. I even enjoyed the one with Kelsey Grammer in it. That's the, that's the Jesus Revolution. Yeah. I haven't even seen I that one really yet. I really enjoyed that. So. I recommend that one, too. It was interesting. Yeah. And well-acted, but of course I love Kelsey Grammer. So. Who doesn't? <laughs> All right. Well, enough ranting and, and worrying about children. Let's, 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 let's share some... 
good story, shall we? Counterculture Wise is proud to present News of the Weird and Wonderful. Here are your hosts, Melanie Hope and Jim Monis. All righty. I love this one. This, okay. this is this is one that you. This is something I think you would do if uh, Sadie were threatened. <laughs> Probably. A Maine woman was bitten by a bear in her backyard while defending her pet dog, necessitating Ow, a trip a to the hospital for damage. stitches. Oh, by the way, this woman was 64 years old. Go, Miss so, Kelly. So Grandma beat beat up a bear. Beat up a bear. Lynn Kelly, 64, was tending her garden in Porter when her dog took off into the woods because that's what dogs do. God bless them. Barking at something on Friday. In short order, the dog was racing back to the yard with a black bear in hot pursuit, said Mark Laddie, spokesman for the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Kelly stood and made herself appear large, which is recommended in a black bear encounter. You know, I still think I would do the old-fashioned... Um, Cower. The mether. Cower, turn around, scream, run, run away, <laughs> screaming my full head off. But anyway, instead of slowly retreating, she proceeded to confront the bear, which is not recommended. Oh. Okay. The bear briefly latched onto Kelly's wrist after she punched the animal in the nose. And she received stitches for the wound at Memorial Hospital so North wait, Conway. So wait, she made herself larger and you're supposed to just back away slowly and hope yeah. the bear thinks you're scary? Right. And instead she just walked up and popped him in the schnoz? Yeah. What a moron. Just, just bopped him on. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. No. This should have happened in Florida if they had black bears there. It's rare for someone to be bitten by a bear in Maine, even though the state is one of the largest black bear populations on the eastern seaboard. Encounters with bears can be reduced by removing or securing bind... F- I'm sorry. Bear Not one of my glasses. Let's Bird. try this. <laughs> glasses on. Here there we, we go. go. Encounters with bears can be reduced by removing or securing bird feeders. Uh-oh. Garbage. Whoop-oh. Pet food. Yipe. And other things that attract bears' attention. Fortunately, yeah, surprised there's no black old... bears in, in this region of Texas Ooh, because... We don't know that. <laughs> we probably got all kinds of fun things. Look, this is miles and miles of prairie, dude. Yeah. And it's like a billion degrees. Well, there's that. They're, they're, like, they're like retreating in the back with a Coca-Cola, just like in the commercials. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Those are polar bears. It doesn't matter. They're bears. Okay. <laughs> Uh, an mm-hmm. Oklahoma woman is trying to solve the mystery of an unknown flying creature that keeps thumping on her family's back door late at night. <laughs> she said her family has repeatedly been awakened in the middle of the night by a loud banging on her back door. I thought someone was hitting baseballs against the house. Then it started sounding like basketballs. Dylan's home security camera recorded unclear footage of a flying creature she believes to be a bat. But Michael Holmes of the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation said it could also be a large moth. We do have moths that big here. Yes, we do. I had one plow into me the other day, almost knocked me over. This is a good year for moths because it's been pretty wet for the summer. This is the time of year they're out and trying to mate. So apparently this moth is trying to mate with her door. (laughs) State is home to multiple species of large insects, including Luna, which is a very large moth, Sphinx, and Polyphemus moths. If it is a bat, keep in mind bats eat a lot of insects, mosquitoes, and other things that we don't like. Oh, I wish we had a billion bats out here. Bats do serve a purpose, and they won't hurt you either. I love bats. Um, so it's either a bat or a moth. We don't know what it is. But much like all the UFOs, it just can't be captured on video. <laughs> all right. This is interesting. I didn't know this was... <laughs> okay, this headline's hilarious. Yeah, it was, and I... I... It's more serious than it than the, than, I mean I, I did this based on the headline I'll admit, and I did not know that this was a medical procedure back in the day although it makes sense. Archaeologists in Rome have unearthed a trove of artifacts from the site of a Renaissance era hospital built atop the ancient Caesar's Forum. Among these discoveries, most remarkable are 500-year-old urine flasks used for diagnosing ailments in what was one of history's most bizarre medical practices, of course. But we do that now. <laughs> yeah, we do. During the Renaissance, I mean, we don't do bloodletting anymore, so no, there's no. that. During the Renaissance, a baker's guild used the space to build their Hospital de Fornari, or Baker's Hospital. Okay. Workers at the hospital then created the dump to manage the hospital's waste 
where artifacts lay undisturbed for hundreds of years. The archaeological team partnered with the Caesars Forum Project. I keep wanting to go back to Vegas and go gambling every time I hear Caesars for yeah. some reason. See, that's what they've done to me. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Caesars Forum they Project, really, the Danish... Really a Danish-Italian research group dedicated to studying Caesar's Forum to examine the hundreds of artifacts at the trash dump. The team primarily found ceramic vessels, coins, rosaries, and glassware at the dump site. According to the team's published findings in the journal Antiquity, they believe these items were once used by patients at the hospital and that the medical center may have provided patients with a gift basket consisting of a jug, drinking glass, bowl, and a plate. We don't get gift baskets when we go to the hospital. No, I... We just get gigantic bills. Yeah. Well, I got cornflakes. Anyway, however, more than half the glassware at the dump consisted of matula, the urine flasks once used by doctors across Europe. Hospital staff used the flasks to collect urine from patients for analysis and observation, including smelling and tasting at yeah. times. Okay. Blech. This practice would have been routine as the practice of ur uroscopy, or the study of urine, had been an integral part of medicine as far back as ancient Greece. A doctor would pour the patient's urine into a flask to observe its color, sedimentation, smell, and sometimes even taste, said project directors Rubina Raha, Jan Kinberg Jacobson, and Claudio Parisi Presice. Analyzing a patient's urine this way would allow a doctor to determine if he or she had any illnesses like jaundice, kidney disease, or diabetes. Historians specifically note that urine tasting was effective in diagnosing diabetes given the excess glucose in a patient's urine that would give it a distinct sweet flavor. Huh. Still can't, uh, still can't recommend the practice. It's just too icky. And, yeah, I'm a 58-year-old man saying icky. According to Gizmodo, one 17th century English physician, Thomas Willis, described the pee of, of diabetes patient as wonderfully sweet as if it were imbued with honey or sugar. So that's that's probably that was probably my whiz up until a few years you? ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't plan to ask anybody to sample it. After tasting, smelling, and examining the urine, hospital staff would dispose of the urine flasks at the dump. Then once the dump became full, staff would entomb the site in clay, presumably for sanitary reasons. We're so, ahead of their time in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, they they still, trust me, I'm poked and prodded on uh, at least twice yearly basis. And so, yeah, I mean, it's still a practice, but I, they, they, they use tools now. I'm pretty now. sure they don't taste they, it. They, they, use, they use tools now rather than tongues, but, you know, whatever. I think that's very fascinating. They and use tools Like I said, I initially, I, I initially um, brought this aboard because I thought it was a funny... Headline, but it's actually pretty cool. It's, it's, yeah, it's quite interesting, actually. All right. And now, and a now, historic moment in music. This is so cool. And, yeah, it is. And um, congratulations. So, 35 years after Tracy Chapman released Fast Car, the iconic ode to poverty, aging, and unrealized dreams, the song has become a number one hit on Billboard's, Billboard's country airplay chart, cementing her as the first black woman songwriter to reach the top since its debut in 1990. Not a whole lot of black female country western stars. So how does a three and a half decade old hit... God, am I that old? I remember when that song first came out. Oh, I love that song. It's a fantastic <laughs> song. It's a sad song, but yeah. it's pretty amazing. Fast enough that you can drive away. How does a three and a half decade old hit manage that? Well... In this case, and of course they do a white man. You know, why did they capitalize black but not white? Uh, I don't know. That's rude. Mm. A white man in a trucker hat decided to sing it. That's right. Thanks to Luke Combs' cover of Fast Car, Chapman has made country music history. And she was more graceful than the racist writer of this article. I never expected to find myself on the country charts, but I'm honored to be there, she told Billboard. I'm happy for Luke and his success and grateful that new fans have found and embraced Fast Car. There you go. So, um, it... I'm going to have to listen premiered to in, Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm interested in hearing it. It premiered in April and racked up 46 worldwide million streams. Good gravy. And he's even included Chapman's hit in his set list throughout the years. 
Only recently, though, did he decide to record a version of the song for his fourth studio album, as he says it's been a huge part of his Luke life. Luke Combs is great, by the way. I like his, I like his music. So. Yeah, he said, I've always loved it, and I think it's the more and more I hear it, especially the older and older I get, it just gets better and better every time. He likes repeating himself. Mm-hmm. I loved it when I was five years old, and me and my dad used to listen to that album on cassette tape in the truck. So I love that whole album, but that song oh. stood out to me. So... Congratulations, Chapman. That is awesome. And I'm glad you got to actually receive the award while you're still with us because it seems to me a lot of times this happens a little too late. Yeah. So, and she looks genuinely happy. She looks very, very happy. Okay, this looks interesting. This this amuses (laughs) me because... You know, they say, "Don't California my Nevada, and yeah. don't California my Texas." Well, they, they've already somebody took somebody there. took it that extra. Somebody went there. A revoked Nevada license plate that was meant to drive away, so to speak, and Californians is getting one last chance to go back on the streets. The plate, which reads G O B K two C A, short for "Go Back to California." was recalled by the State Department of Motor Vehicles in May after it received a complaint. Wait, you, can, you can get your license plate revoked if somebody whines about it? That Are we would be really at that stage? Yep. I don't like your license plate. Shut up, you infant. And go back to California. Yeah, please. Now that the video owner is appealing to recall, we'll have a hearing on Wednesday according to the Reno area news station Colo. I mean, it's not, it's not vulgar. No. It's, it's I mean... It's, they're saying it's defamatory. That's not defamatory. Go yeah, on. Yeah, I know. Section of Nevada Administrative Code applied to the recall prohibits defamatory references to a person or group. In this case, the defamed group is Californians. DMV spokesperson Eli Roll told the Las Vegas Review Journal. He added that the government regularly turns down license plates that share the same message. Here's what you do. Uh, that's okay. Anyway, um. You put a license plate frame on it that says "Go back to California." They can't do anything about that. Mm. A special Unless license. Unless you have an HOA, remember that guy with the flag? Yeah, a special license committee meets every Monday to review reported license plates before determining which ones violate the Nevada statute. The DMV reviewed more than 700 license plates from July 2022 to early March. Denied. License plates include the puzzling G G G G G G G, seven Gs. Why would you deny that? I don't know. I mean, I could understand if it was just three Ks, but the the well, over seven Gs. The overly rude U space one D one O T. Hmm, that sounds pretty that close sounds and familiar. familiar. Yeah. And many not so subtle allusions to profanity, including the K, according to K Loss TV in Las Vegas. Okay. And yet you can still have the faux. Q restaurant, yeah, <laughs> with the big sign. There, there's one called F- 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 Kim King. Long. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's in uh, Chinatown in Vegas. In Vegas, yeah. I don't think we ever actually went in there because the place next to it was that sandwich shop I adored. These sandwiches, oh my god! Yeah, that's 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 a stop. In our but next believe it or not, we were exactly there. at the top of the hour. Seriously, yes, we, we were, barely got started. We were all that we weren't going to have enough time or enough stories and here we are so let's let um, Chuck have a last word before we head out to pay some bills and then we'll come back with this is why we can't have nice thing sounds like a plan to me and of course we'll have some wonder fuller And now, CCW News presents Holy Crap, This is Actually Happening! Oh, thank heaven edition, July 11th, 2023. I'm Chuck U. Farley. The big news this week is that a white powdery substance was found in the west wing of the White House, which led to a total evacuation. The substance was later confirmed to be cocaine, a favorite snack of the current residents would be felon if it weren't for sweetheart deals, son. Because cocaine users aren't known for wearing surgical gloves when partaking, and every staff and family member that enters the highest security area in the nation must be fingerprinted, not to mention all of the surveillance equipment throughout, it stands to reason that the left-behind baggie would easily lead to its owner. 
But the White House swears they don't have the foggiest notion who could have left it there. And it sure as heck fire wasn't Hunter, so don't even ask, or his daddy will take you behind the woodshed. Besides, according to Jean-Luc Diversity Hire, who got extremely upset with the silly press who kept asking for a yes or no answer she wasn't able to give, Hunter wasn't even there when he left behind his coke, so he couldn't have left it behind because he wasn't there when he forgot it. Since they've gone full Epstein with the video footage, the world will never know the culprit. Investigators are instead pretty sure that the presidential drug doer was the same mystery person who leaked the Supreme Court's draft for Roe vs. Wade last year, so that ends that investigation. And just in case you get any highfalutin ideas about reporting on the story, the Hyden Bidens have already filed a court order to repeal the First Amendment. I swear, I am not making this up. Abortion providers saw a significant dip in their blood money when the Supreme Court returned constitutional states' rights to the states, which allows each state to decide when, how, and if they will murder their own children. Like dentists giving away candy in an effort to create more customers, Planned Parenthood put up billboards and tweeted out that virginity is a social construct that hurts everyone. No. Really. I swear I'm not making this up. They intend to partner with Disney and drag queens to redefine butchering babies as a colorful, family-friendly event. We went from cage match to court battle as Musk threatens to sue Zuckerberg for stealing Twitter's trade secrets and former employees. Thanks for taking the fun out of everything, boys. Nerdy Bond villain Bill, a never met a virus he didn't love, Gates, has been very busy doing Bond villainy things, like releasing 150,000 genetically modified malaria-infected mosquitoes in Florida, unsurprisingly against the locals' will. The idea is that these gene-bending mosquitoes will mate with the locals, causing a population decrease of the mosquitoes, not the people. Completely unbiased Snopes stepped in for a fact check to let us know that Gates himself didn't personally release the mosquitoes, he only paid for it. So you'll be relieved to know that this story is sorta kinda false-ish while still being totally true. In a totally unrelated story, officials are alarmed that malaria outbreaks have been reported in both Florida and Texas for the first time in 20 years. What do you do when you force taxpayers to fund importing so many foreign soldiers that they successfully burn your entire country to the ground with literally zero pushback? Cut off their social media, of course. At least that's what France's dictator Macron is proposing. That'll surely stop the rioting, right kids? Again, I swear I am not making this up. Speaking of cutting off, after reporting that Prigozhin's plane landed in Belarus, not necessarily with Prigozhin on it, Oddly, no one has since seen or heard from the supposed Russian coup leader. While everyone has been strongly and often assured that he made it safely with Putin's blessing, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko said Thursday that he's actually in St. Petersburg, which is decidedly not Belarus. While the most dictator thing Putin could do is keep the insurrectionist for torture and questioning, much like powdery White House substances, the press will only report that the fate of Prigozhin remains, quote, a mystery. For CCW News, this has been holy crap. This is actually happening. I'm Chuck U. Farley. Good night, and may God help us. Yeah, I get it. Your parents were jerks and you're traumatized. But that doesn't mean you should use your lousy childhood as an excuse to be a lousy adult. Stop being such a whiner and get past your past already. Bye, get over it and get started. The book by Melanie Hope that will get you out of your self-imposed failure and on the road to greatness. Available in paperback, Kindle, and Nook. There are times in your life when a normal beer just won't do. You want a beer with body. You want a beer with volume. You want a beer with a unique flavor all its own. That's when it's time to crack open an ice-cold bottle of Flint water. 
Flint Water Lager is made with the finest municipal water Michigan has to offer. Brewed with the best grains you could purchase in bulk from the outlet store and aged in casks made from abandoned pallets from our world-famous shuttered car factories. One sip of Flint Water and you'll know it's the best beer you'll ever taste. It may also be the last beer you'll ever taste, and in that case, why not go out with the very best? Flint Water Beer, the brew for you. Flint Water Brewing Company, Flint, Michigan. Don't drink responsibly, drink Flint Water. In a world where the landscape is darkened by freedom, there is only one hope for humanity, Antifa. In a time where free speech threatens to end life as we know it, there is only one hope for humanity, Antifa. In a country where Easter worshippers unite to tear apart our very social fabric, there is only one hope for humanity, Antifa. Tonight, on the Warner Universal Disney Fox Network, the continuing story of the world's greatest force for peace and justice, Antifa, starring Tab Rockenfeld as Captain Bart Bikelock. Quick, Black Hood, check out the image on the re-screen. No time to lose. Antifa Force, assemble! Also starring Ginger Lake as Barbara Black Hood. Oh no, Captain, it can't be. A group of men sitting peacefully in a circle and praying. What are they trying to do to our fair city? <laughs> Featuring Steve Marcel as Kirby Skater Boy, Mario Spinetti as Perpetual College Student, John or Jane Doe as Gender Ambiguous Person, Melinda Jones as Pissed Off Lesbian Girl, and Raphael Smith as a closeted, violent, psychopathic man. Tonight's special guest, Max von Riegelbeiser as the mainstream media enabler. In all my years behind this desk, I have never seen such awful days as this. Despite the best efforts of our educational system and our elected officials, forces more evil than Chihuahua breeders have discovered the dark power of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. They are practicing the witchcraft of thinking for themselves. Even worse, right this very minute, people are doing actual research and reporting things on their own rather than blindly trusting us. Oh, where has this once great nation gone? Antifa, save us! Tune in tonight at 9 p.m. for Antifa! And catch back episodes on demand at msnbcnnbcbsnbconddemand.com. Leaders, listen up. Do you feel like you can't get a dang thing done because of all the namsy pamsy crybabies that want you to coddle their creativity? When you give orders, are you met with vacant stares only rivaled by a cocker spaniel? It's not them. It's you. You need to shape up or they'll ship you out. Read the Sniper's Guide to Leadership and you will become a more effective leader, communicator, and motivator. Forget smart goals and learn swift goals. Get the Sniper's Guide to Leadership in paperback, Kindle, and Nook. Today! Hello, my name is... Eh, what do you care? Anyway, my people have had years and years of persecution. We've complained about it ever since Moses brought us out of the wilderness. So what do you all do? You now pay absolutely no attention to us at all anymore. Women's March this, Black Lives that. What are we, chopped liver? It's time we stood up and started complaining again. We have developed the very weapon that will help us reclaim our rightful place of quetching in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Mazel Tov cocktail. Handcrafted from the finest kosher beer bottles, filled with the tears of our ancestors that burn harder than the Arab sun, and wicked by our own rendered garments, the Mazel Tov cocktail is guaranteed to splatter and spread millennia's worth of oppressed rage and guilt, so you'll know for certain you are doing God's wake.
Use the best, forget the rest. The number one bomb for civil unrest, made exclusively by the world's oppressed, Mazeltov. May cause itching, burning, stinging, sores, zits, hives, freckles, cancer, and Karen Collins. Not for use by clubs, noobs, cucks, simps, fascists, do nothing, weaklings, and especially Antifa because they are all of those things. Most effective at night after curfew. Mazeltov is not responsible for any breakages, slippage, mishandling, jail time, or insurance claims. Hi, everybody. This is Fritzina Fluffybottom. Did you know that we have a subscribe star? We do! There are lots of fabulous extra things on there that you can't get anywhere else, like outtakes, new books, and extra videos. And you can sign up for as little as one dollar. Our entire show is funded by you, our loyal viewers. Please make sure you sign up today so that Mommy and Daddy can get me shiny new bells for my collar, extra feathery toys, yummy crumbly cat food bowls made just for kitty cats, more cow pillows for my couch, name brand albacore tuna, my own pink pink cat. Now, see, that's why we can't have nice things. Well, good old Mayor de Blasty Hole is back in the, in the papers. <laughs> <laughs> As I think Max is the one who called him that. Um, rut row. Rut row rut. And sometimes the, uh, the link goes, goes sour, so ah. let me get the correct link here. So apparently, <laughs> his wife, who before he married her was a lesbian, uh, splitting up with him. I couldn't imagine why. <laughs> I should not be laughing at this. That's okay. I mean, he used to identify as a governor, so I, you know, whatever. I should not be laughing at this. <laughs> so extremely lefty. Democratic Mayor Bill de Blasty Hole and his wife, Sherlane McRae, who previously identified as a lesbian, have decided to separate. Previously? Are... <laughs> How do you previously? The two are splitting romantically to date other people. But they are not planning on divorcing or even moving out of their Brooklyn home. Yep, he's a lefty. He's a lefty. Um, their decision came after a discussion of at home about two months ago that began with de Blasty Hole querying why they weren't lovey-dovey anymore. You can feel when things are off. You're off because you are a lefty. I just want to have fun, she said. It's not that we haven't had fun. Hey, girls, just want to have... You guys are... Huh. We just... There's no morals anymore. Nope, we, nope, we have nope. gone... Isn't this why Rome fell? Yes. Weren't we just reading about pee bottles? I mean, isn't this exactly why Rome fell? Yes. That and pee bottles. That and pee bottles. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, this is why we can't have nice things because of people like that. <laughs> Your turn. All right. Democratic U.S. Senator Tim Kaine and Representative Barbara Lee raised concerns on... July 9th over the decision by President Joe Biden's administration to send cluster bombs to Ukraine to combat the Russian invasion. And this is the same administration that just a year and a half ago said that anyone using cluster bombs was committing war crimes. Yep. The United States said on Friday, it would, this is why even people in his own party are going, wait a minute, wait a minute, you promised this. Mm -hmm. The United States said on Friday would supply Kiev with the widely banned bombs as part of a new $800 million security package. I'm putting security packages, little quotey, air quotey things, <laughs> quote -y, air -quote as, things. As, as Melanie would call them. That brings total U.S. military aid to more than $40 billion U.S. billion since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began in February 22. Um, before I go any further, I oppose this proxy war with Russia. I want to make that absolutely clear. Yes, I this well. is this is taking our tax dollars. I know it's such a cliche that we can feed, clothe, and all that stuff every American yada yada. Forty billion dollars is a lot of money. Anyway, rights groups and United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres have questioned Washington Washington's decision on the munitions. 
McCain said he had some real qualms about the U.S. decision to send cluster bombs to Ukraine because it could inspire other countries to sidestep an international convention barring the munitions. Duh. It could give a green light to other nations to do something different as well, he told Fox News on Sunday. However, he added he appreciates the Biden administration has grappled with the risks. I don't really believe that at all. They're not going to use these munitions against Russian civilians. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, one, maybe yeah, not. Yeah, right. Kane, who sits on the Senate Armed Services Committee, said of Ukraine's potential use of those bombs, adding, added Kiev had given assurances that were outlined by the White House on Friday. Cluster munitions are prohibited by more than 100 countries. Russia, Ukraine, and the U.S. have not signed on to the Convention on Cluster Munitions, which bans production, stockpiling, use, and transfer of the weapons. In case you don't know, they typically release large numbers of smaller bomblets that can kill indiscriminately over a wide area. Those they're, that they're like, they're, uh, and the, the duds are, are like landmines. Exactly. That was the next sentence in the... Uh, oh, so my you bad. Put it, no, no, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, you realize what's going on. Lee urged the Biden administration to reconsider the step. They won't. Cluster bombs should never be used. That's crossing a line, she told CNN. Adding the United States risk losing its moral leadership by sending cluster bombs to Ukraine. Hey, folks, we lost our moral leadership a long time ago. We've done enough things to bring this nation's morality into question. I'm not talking about us as individuals. I'm talking about our government. But we've done that a hundred times. It makes you it makes you just want to cry sometimes. It's just so it, stupid what people are doing to each other. You really think hard about it like I'm like I am now and I'm getting emotional and uh, Well yeah I mean they're bashing Trump because he said he wants people to stop dying. That's somehow a bad thing. And they're bashing him for it because these warmongering pedos just can't see the world. I, I just, why? Why are they always on the wrong side of everything while they're pointing at us and saying, because we don't want to trans and murder our children and we don't want to blow up citizens in a foreign country. And we don't want our tax dollars going to their debauchery. We're the ones that are the problem? I mean, these people are just sick. And now let's talk about one who's just stupid. So we reported on this a couple weeks ago about the guy who carved <laughs> his girlfriend's name in the side of Rome's Colosseum. We seem to be spending a lot of time in Rome today. Yeah, when in Rome... <laughs> Melanie's so, been there I've, I've only been to the airport I'd love to visit yeah. Rome someday Maximilian, if you want to be part of the broadcast You can come in here and sit on the chair But I'm not letting you outside He really wants to go outside you Never should have put bells on the doorknob Because that stupid cat rings him all the time now too Actually he's not a stupid cat He figured well, okay, it the, out The too smart cat, yeah All right, the tourist who carved his name into the Colosseum Who was his girlfriend's name has reportedly claimed in an apology letter, I can't even believe I'm reading this out loud, that he didn't know it was old. The man carved Ivan plus Haley 23 into the ancient monument using a key and was traced to the UK, thank God it wasn't an American for once, after an outraged bystander filmed it and put it online. Ivan Dimitrov, who is with his girlfriend and is believed to live in Bristol, could be fined 15,000 euros Please or do. even be jailed for up to five years. Please do. For God's sake, it actually wasn't an American for once. I'm, I'm blown away. <laughs> Anger over the incident has been widespread, with Italy's culture minister calling it offensive to everyone around the world. Dimitrov has now written an apology to Rome's public prosecutor and to the city's mayor, according to Rome newspaper in which he offers heartfelt and honest apologies to the Italians and to the whole world. I didn't know it was old. What the living Christ did you think it was? Despite the Colosseum being more than 1,900 years old, he reportedly <laughs> writes, I would admit with profound embarrassment that only after what regretfully happened did I learn of the antiquity of the monument. 
His lawyer told the newspaper it's hoped the letter will help Dimitrov avoid the harshest sentence. Nah, give it to him. That's, the video that, that's... shows the tourist smiling at the camera after he carves the names while someone can be heard saying, Serious man, F up man, stupid A. It just has a bunch of stars, so you can figure out what that means. It's not the first time a tourist has defaced the Colosseum. And then they give us a couple more examples. Um, a Russian tourist was fined 20,000 euros. And nope, no other Americans have done it. Yay, America! Finally, we did something. It says in 2015. No, don't, 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 nope, 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 nope. We just want to pretend that Americans aren't that stupid. Yeah, it's a pretend. That's for sure. That's just pretentious as can be. Oh, Rudy. Well, you know, I used to really enjoy Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I used to really enjoy ice cream when it was just frickin' ice cream. And I knew these guys were libtards. I mean, I knew it, and I still bought their ice cream. Now it's just gotten totally stupid, and I'll just go back to a company like Dryers or Baskin Good Robbins that, that doesn't doesn't yeah. uh, mess We've with this really stuff. Digging the, the keto stuff, it's pretty good. Yeah, it is. Ben and Jerry's. Oh yeah, yeah. A Native American oh, chief. Is, it's hilarious. This, this so is hilarious. A Native funny. American chief in Vermont has called out Ben and Jerry's for having its headquarters on indigenous land. The ice cream company has been receiving backlash after they tweeted on July 4th, calling for the United States to return indigenous land. Durf. Now Don Stevens, chief of the Nolhagen Band of the Kusuk Abenaki Nation, has told the New York Post that the land the company built their HQ on is on native land. Stephen said, if you look at the Abenaki traditional way of being, we are place-based people. Before recognized tribes in the state, we were the ones who were in this place. Stevens also said he looks forward to any kind of correspondence with the brand to see how they can better benefit indigenous people. He, he continued, looks humans, totally white. He looks just he, old, fat, and white. Nah, I can see it. He does look Native oh, does American. Does he have high cheekbones like what's-her-face? I, who's what's her face anyway Pocahontas. things aren't always the way they assume. <laughs> Pocahontas out of Mohawk and was ugly as hell that, that's the not, real Pocahontas yeah. the real Pocahontas she died as syphilis was it I don't remember I wasn't there he continued humans have a responsibility to take care of resources in places because we have the in places because we have the de- ability to destroy so yeah that's funny as heck I didn't um, realize they were Bernie, Bo- Bernie Bros. Oh, they were big time ben- yeah. Bernie Bros. Ben and Jerry's was founded by longtime Bernie Sanders allies Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenwood. Since founding the company in 1987, it has since been sold to British multinational Unilever, of course. You know, the best foods, mayonnaise, wow, um, so these, uh, Do- Dove Quarter co- these, Cleansing these Cream these Soap. Socialist hippies. Yeah. Uh, what do their houses look like? The ice cream company also suggested that Mount Rushmore should be returned to its original owners, and then what? Blown up? Shut up. You Go know what? away. We are the original owners. We won. Get over it. You yeah. hadn't even invented the damn wheel yet. Come on, people. One commenter compared the statement of Bud Light partnering with. Oh, I'm so sick of hearing about Dylan Mulvaney. I don't drink their beer anymore. I don't care about Dylan one way or the damn other. Well, it, it, it's just it's, it's not. Just, it's not Dylan. And okay? I'm not. I'm it's, not that we're just sick of being preached to by people that have zero morals and don't care about what they're saying. They don't really even believe it themselves. They don't live it. They don't contribute to it. They don't do the things that they're preaching. And we're just sick of it. It's like, make ice cream. Shut up. Make beer. Shut up. How hard is it? How hard is it? I'm really cranky tonight. You're excessively... <laughs> I'm excessively cranky tonight. Yeah. But wait until next week, baby, because that <laughs> rant is going to be a pay a say. Oh, okay. Ben and Jerry's has throughout its history been a supporter of far-left causes and partnered with various movements for social justice. Total cliche crap. Yesterday, and believe it or not, this is one where, I'm, where I align with him. I don't know about you, Melanie, but... Yesterday, its co-founder Ben Cohen was released was arrested outside the Department of Justice for protesting the prosecution of WikiLeaks publisher Julian Assange. No, okay. I will back him on. I'll that I'll back one. him on that one. He, uh, he was part of a group denouncing the charges I'm against WikiLeaks. I'm disgusted that founder. Trump didn't 
yeah. pardon him. Cohen told his 25,000 followers on Twitter. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Dang it, I did it again. Cohen told his 25,000 followers on Twitter on, yes, on Wednesday he expected to be arrested. Assange has been imprisoned at Belmarsh Prison in London since April 2019 for leaking state secrets and may soon be extradited to the U.S. He won't even make it to our shore. He'll be he'll be Epstein. You think so? Oh yeah. That's. I think sucks. so. Yeah, anyway, that, that's one of I, I'm not not going to forgive Trump for. He should have pardoned him and brought him home. Instead, we got the stupid basketball player that hates the country. You know, let the Marines rot. We don't give a crap about them. Let's bring home the no, dumbass basketball player. He hates the Marines. We'll just leave it at that. I know because I'm one. Couldn't stop smoking drugs for five minutes in Russia. The stone you win, you'd be in such a dope. <laughs> stone All right. Well, everybody's like excited about the ginger snaps, and it's not happening tonight. It's not happening tonight. No, I mean she's already had a few minor I, snaps. I, I had snaplets, if you will. A few snapples. Whipper snappers. Whipper snappers. A little snaplets. <laughs> One and a half calories. Not snappy enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, let's, uh, <laughs> I, I had some sound bites that I wanted to play, I just wasn't able to gather them, so we'll play an oldie. This is not Bubba Walters, it is no longer 2020, but this is your new Abnormal. which is why we will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work operating from the new norms, rules, and agreements that we will convene to work together on to galvanize global action. We're going to let uh, folks who are working on this continue to work. We understand there's more work to do, of course. So all of these things took work. That is just a fact. And so that is, is there a lot of, is there more work to be done? Of course. That work is going to continue. We will, fur we will further work in the coming, upcoming weeks. And that was the work, that, that work, that was the work that we had to get to work. Tell me how you do that. I'm not, I understand it. I mean, it's clear in its face. You're accurate. But how in making the case of the freedom men have, what do you do to other than to sort of embarrass men into getting into the, into the argument and voting the right way on this issue? Jay, she's in the Donald, this is president. I'm the only president they got. I swear his diversity hires are getting dumber by the day. I, I think the only reason he surrounds himself with just complete morons who can't even string two words together is to try to make himself look better. <laughs> I swear. It's not working, Joseph. It's, it's not, well, he doesn't even know where he is half the time. Okay, so this one, there's a lot of speculation here, and I have been checking back on this story, and they still don't have any suspects. But tell me if something smells a little off. Okie doke. Okay, so this 15-year-old boy, and this is in, in uh, Sussex, I believe. 15-year-old boy is walking home through a park, and he is grabbed, stripped, sexually accosted, knocked unconscious, and here is the headline that the BBC presents. Boy left unclothed after Burgess Hill sexual assault by two women. So let me give you the description of the two women and, and why, you know, like I said, we don't have any other information. It's been several days. We still don't have any suspects. We don't know anything that's going on. But tell me if this sounds a little bit sus. Sorry for smacking my head on the microphone there. Okay. Something sounds sus in Sussex. Something sounds sus. Okay. A 15-year-old was walking along Cance Lane in Burgess Hill before heading through a wooded area toward the world's end at about 
okay, you know military time, 1815, that's like 5 p.m.? It's like 6.15 okay. in the evening. He was assaulted and woke up on the floor. I'm, I'm assuming they mean the floor of the uh, forest. <laughs> okay. Both women were between 18 and 20 years old. One being six foot three and with bright dyed red hair. She was wearing blue shorts and a black crop top with pink Air Jordan trainers and had glasses. The other was five foot nine with long white blonde hair and spoke with a Mary Side accent. Mercy Side. Whatever. I talk like this, so, you know. Is it. <laughs> Eyebrow raising at all? Well, Especially they might the not be the, the most feminine women. I'm around. leaning or, towards that because I've never. But the other thing is, these two were rather distinct looking. I mean, this isn't something that these aren't people you would see every day out in the sticks Six in England. Foot three. With bright dyed red hair, and they can't find <clears throat> her. I mean, maybe they tossed the wig away when they assaulted the kid. I don't know, but I mean, seems to me like the kid gave him a pretty damn good description, I, and it's not like it's a huge town. No, it, it isn't. But there have been literally no updates. They can't find it. It's 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 it's. It's just like Hunter's Coke. Where did it come from? Where did it go? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just I just don't know. You're telling me you can't find a <clears throat> woman <laughs> who is six foot three with bright red it's like, hair. That's like basketball player. That's like WNBA size. And the chances <clears throat> that <clears throat> she would be hanging out with a five nine woman? I mean, unless they literally are from a basketball team. And then, wouldn't that make it easier to find them? Yeah, you think. So I'm going to be following this story because, first of all, this headline's dumb. Was left unclothed. <laughs> I mean, really, BBC, come on. I mean, I know the government tells you what you're allowed to write, but come on. Boy left unclothed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Right>. <clears throat> left unclothed, yeah. So I'm sure these... And women will be found soon. Just, that's all I'm going to say. So, so our, our uh, pastor just today was talking about a several thousand dollar deal that he made with a handshake, mm -hmm. which is common in these parts. Right. So this, this next, uh, this the, next article is a little scary. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't going in the right direction. A Saskatchewan judge says an emoji can amount to a contractual agreement <clears throat> and ordered a farmer to pay more than $82,000, Canadian, I guess, for not delivering product to a grain buyer after responding to a text message with a thumbs-up image. <clears throat> the Court of King's Bench decision said a grain buyer with Southwest Terminal sent a text to farmers in March 2021 saying that the company was looking to buy 86 tons of flax for $17 per bushel to be delivered in the fall. The buyer, Kent Mickleborough, later spoke with Swift Current farmer Chris Atcher on the phone and texted a picture of a contract to deliver the flax in November, adding, Please confirm flax contract. Atcher texted back a thumbs-up emoji, but when November came around, the flax was not delivered, and the prices for the crop had increased. Mickleborough said the emoji amounted to an agreement because he had texted numerous contracts to Atcher, who previously confirmed through text messages and always fulfilled the order. <clears throat> but the farmer argued that the emoji indicated only that he'd received the contract in the text message. I deny he accepted the thumbs-up emoji as a digital signature of the incomplete contract, eh? Atcher said in an affidavit to court, I did not have time to review the flax contract and merely wanted to indicate that I did receive the text message. 
Justice Timothy Keene said in his June decision that the thumbs-up emoji did meet signature requirements, and therefore the farmer breached his contract. I'm not buying this at all. This sounds like a... It's Canada, the, honey. Is Soros funding judges <clears throat> in Canada now, too? Yeah. The judge pointed to a Dictionary.com definition of the thumbs-up emoji, which said it is used to express assent, approval, or encouragement in digital communications. This court readily acknowledges that a thumbs-up emoji is a non-traditional means to sign a document, but nevertheless, under these circumstances, this was a valid way to convey the two purposes of a signature, Keene wrote in his decisions. Atcher's lawyers argued that following an emoji to act as a... I'm sorry. Argued that allowing an emoji to act as a signature or acceptance for contracts would open the floodgates for cases interpreting the meaning of the images. They're right. This is a bad decision. Keene's decision noted the case is novel, but the judge said emojis, emojis are now commonly used. This court cannot, nor should it, attempt to stem the tide of technology and common usage. This appears to be the new reality in Canadian society, and courts will have to be ready to meet the new challenges that may arise from the use of emojis and the like, Keene said. No, I think they're just trying to put farmers out of business like they are everywhere else. Well, I, I know that... Okay, I I just read this headline again, and this woman knocks all the sense out of my brain, so I couldn't even finish the last sentence. <laughs> I'm really glad this is yours, because oh, this the, is inexplainable to me. It's just oh, unexplainable. <clears throat> okay, so whatever you do, fellow listeners, our fans, our friends, whatever you do, do not envision that Muppet... From Legend. Was it Legend? No, I don't think it was Legend. It was, um... Ah, crud, what was it called? The ones with, where the girls have wings the boys don't. Ah, man. I can't remember what the name of it is. I Don't you hate it when you know what you're talking about? I do. I also hate it when I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, now I have to find it. Chat, help me out here. Um... Come on, come on, come on. It's the... It's a dark Muppet. Dark Crystal? Yeah, from the Dark Crystal, I think. Okay. Um, it might be from the, the Dark Crystal. Okay, well, once I start talking, um, well, all I'm saying is just don't... Yeah, why did I type that? Don't you hate it when you think you know what you're talking about? Um, yeah, it's the Dark Crystal. And what is the character's name? Mm, it'll come up. You guys will know who I'm talking about. It. <coughs> You'll know what I'm talking about later. I, I tried to find it, but couldn't find it. Okay. Sue. Janet Yellen. <laughs> Janet Yellen. Um, is in China. For no particular reason other than to embarrass us more than Joe Biden could have. Which is really hard to do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Dark Crystal. Uh, so our Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, <laughs> for some reason is in China and seems to not understand that China is not Japan. So <clears throat> when she's introduced to Vice Premier Hu, actually that's the name that she gave her, his actual name is Vice Premier, he... <laughs> but she said, you proceeds to bow to him three times. So now we're, we're, we're sending Janet Yellen of all people to the dumbest treasury secretary we've ever had. Like by far. Do you know what she just said yesterday? A recession is not off the table. <clears throat> what, what in the living Christ does that even <clears throat> mean? A recession is not off the table. Pardon Gee, my voice, folks. Thanks, Captain Obvious. How nice of you to like come around to you know what all of us already knew, but why would it be on the table? Why do we even have this table? <laughs> A recession is not off the table. Yeah, so she bows multiple times, you know, to this Chinese premier, and then proceeds to call him by the wrong name. <laughs> you know. My understanding is that when a government official visits another one, whether it's a U.S. visiting another country or another country visiting us, there are experts 
on the culture and on the, the structure of their government that inform you, okay, when you go over here, you shake his hand, you do this, you do that. Even when I went to Japan as, as a Marine, they gave us an hour-long lecture on mm -hmm. how to behave there, mm -hmm. what yeah. to do, what not to do, and all that kind of stuff. Well, a former, I mean, that's just basic. A former senior staff member from George Bush's administration, uh, Bradley Blakeman, says, never, ever, ever, an American official does not bow. It looks like she's been summoned to the principal's office, and that's exactly the optics the Chinese love. Oh, but let's take it one step further. In China, on the 4th of July, the U.S. Embassy choir sang the Chinese national anthem in Beijing. There's goodwill, and then there's stupidity. Well, remember, we are flying a Chinese flag at the same height as the American flag. Where? In D.C., right now. There's pictures of it. I, sh I sent them to you. Mm -hmm. So everybody else, everybody is saying bowing is not part of the accepted protocol. You should not have done this. Uh, if you want to see the video on it. Um, and then, of course, you've got Jean-Pierre, diversity hire. We're in a place where we have created an economy that the president hopes will work for everybody. He can hope all he wants. That was the answer to the question. The president says we're in competition with China. He's been in office 20, 28 months. Are we winning? The answer she gives. We are in a place where we have created an economy that the president hopes will work for everybody. She's not even answering the questions in, like, in the neighborhood of the question. And, and listening to her, you know, work her way around not answering the Biden question. Honey, it's a yes or no question. Oh, he wasn't even there. He wasn't even there. He wasn't even there. Well, we know that. That's what leaving your coke behind kind of implies, is that you forgot it, and now you're not there because you left it behind. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. And then, I don't know if you've seen the videos. I wish we were on video of him... Uh, Hunter Biden sweating and wiping his brow and shaking during the 4th of July thing. Oh, yeah. he. But he's we're not allowed to talk case. about it because he's the smartest man old Joe knows. Smartest man he knows. He doesn't know very many smart people, I guess. Unbelievable. All no, right. not the furry <clears throat> tribble with the big mouth. I'm trying to remember it was... I don't think it was a gelfling, but it was... Well, you know, well yeah. when you figure it out, you can let us know before the end of the show, right? Yeah, I'll, 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 <clears> I'll figure it out at 4 o'clock in the morning and call you. Just pardon my voice for the rest of the show. This yeah, has been happening a lot voice? more. I think it's that stupid CPAP machine that's leaving me with a dry throat all night. I don't know. Daily Caller co-founder Tucker Carlson said Friday the Capitol Police Chief told him the January 6th riot crowd was filled with federal agents. Mm -hmm. This is in the we already knew that and did a sketch about it routine. Yeah. But anyway, Carlson obtained more than 40,000 hours of video footage from the riot after Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy handed it over in February. Carlson began airing portions of the footage while he was still anchoring at Fox News. Folks are telling you to cut back on the smokes, dude. I am. Been, I had been puffing on cigars a little bit recently, and I've, I've stopped. To everybody who I work with, I didn't say that. Carl, <clears throat> strictly verboten. But anyway. That, why are you announcing it on live? I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Foosball? Jeez. Meh. Carlson sat down with actor Russell Brand on Friday and said he was appalled with the violence and vandalism seen on January 6th. He said the reason he got involved in commenting on it was because the lying about it was immediate. This was a racist, white supremacist insurrection. I interviewed the chief of the Capitol Police, Stephen Sund, in an interview that was never aired on Fox, by the way. I was fired before it could air. I'm going to interview him again, Carlson said. But Stephen Sund was the totally non-political. He worked for Nancy Pelosi. I mean, this was not some right-wing activist. He was the chief of Capitol Police on January 6th. He said, oh, yeah, 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 that crowd was filled with federal agents. What? Yes. Well, he would know, of course, because he was in charge of security at the site. Hmm. Well, how about that? Yeah. How so about that? that would explain why he <clears throat> went, yoink. 
Okay, you know what? It's been purged from the internet because I saw the meme side by side, mm-hmm. and it has been purged from the internet. Now I can't even remember the name of the. I wish I could remember the name of the creature. I, I used to know it, and now I don't. Oh well. Well, there's too much going on. <sighs> Sigh. 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 All right, so we've got time for Florida Man and Wonderfuller, so mm. what would you like to do? Well. <clears throat> because these Florida Man stories are whoppers. They're, okay, they're... we haven't done Florida Man in a while, so let's do that. Ever had a day you felt so stupid, lacking a brain? Well, here's a guy who'll make you feel like a genius and maybe even sane. All the world loves to laugh at losers as often as they can. Here comes another chance to chuckle. Here comes the Florida man. All okay, right. let me let me get all technical here oh. for people who've been asking. <laughs> the CPAP machine, the reason my throat is dry and it's according to with you know, in accordance with the CPAP machine is it's a new machine. I'm using a mask that does not have a chin strap or any kind of way to shut my mouth while I while I sleep. So my mouth opens and I wake up with my throat extremely dry. That's all it is. It's not smoking, it's nothing else. Okay. <laughs> Right. I've talked about so it. I'll it's more than I ever wanted strap. to talk about about my <laughs> physical health. So, take it away, Melanie Hope. All right. Welcome to Florida. And welcome to Florida, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your trays in the upright position. Oh my God, this is hilarious. <laughs> it is. Nassau County, Florida. The Florida Highway Patrol busted and arrested two people for trafficking and manufacturing meth. Near a Florida Welcome Center. <laughs> Welcome to Florida. Have some meth. The FHP conducted a traffic stop on a vehicle suspected of having an illegal window tint. Really? You can pull people over for that? The vehicle was stopped on 995 southbound near the Florida Welcome Center. At the time of the stop, FHP says the driver, a 42-year-old female and a 41-year-old male passenger, were on their way to Apopka, Florida, from Charleston, South Carolina. FHP says during the investigation, the trooper noticed both individuals displayed numerous visual and behavioral indicators of the illegal use of narcotics. Upon requesting consent to search the vehicle, the trooper located liquid and crystal meth, along with the materials used to make both. (laughs) Of course, we're supposed to remind you that the chemicals used to make it are hazardous, flammable, flammable, and pose various health risks to anyone inhaling or ingesting it. Now, Kate, now the headline... The, it implied that there it was like it was, that it was at. Yeah, the I know. The, 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 it said so, that it was at it, not near it. Now it's not as much fun. No, but the next one's fun. Uh, no. da, 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 da. Both were transported to the Nassau County Jail and will be charged with trafficking, possession of. Man- yeah, this one isn't as funny as the headline. I know. I, I'm sorry. Like. I probably should have read it first. Fox Boo, Florida. Is. Boo. Okay, this one's a little Tease bit better. Us with a funny headline and then just better. be a boring old story. Here we go. Boo. Boo. Three Transportation Security Administration, Melanie's very favorite favorite government agency. Two TSA, uh, three TSA officers at Miami Airport were arrested after authorities said they were caught on camera stealing from passengers during security screenings. Surprise! surprise, Joshua Gonzalez, Elizabeth Fuster, and Labarius Williams, and the photos look like three cliches, were arrested Thursday at MIA. That's a great initial for Miami International Airport, MIA. No, didn't do it, didn't do it, didn't do nothing. <laughs> On charges of organized scheme to defraud, Miami-Dade jail records showed. According to arrest so reports... So were they working together? Yeah, they all work at TSA. No, but were they I don't know. We'll like find out. I don't I don't know. <laughs> This is a. It's. It wouldn't be a show without her doing this to me. <laughs> I'm just handling it better than I used to. According to arrest reports, authorities started investigating the thefts that occurred at the airport's security checkpoint E. So yes, they did work together. Detectives discovered. No, I didn't mean they worked together at the same place. I mean, were they in cahoots as far as the stealing stuff? Oh. Let's find out. 
Detectives discovered surveillance videos showed the three officers distracting passengers as they were being screened so they could steal money from their belongings, the report said. In one case, video provided by TSA showed Williams and Gonzalez removing $600 from a passenger's wallet as the passenger was being screened, the report said. So now you have your answer. Well, they actually stole money from the dude's wallet? Yep. Wow, that's hardcore. The three were observed in several similar incidents stealing from passengers, the report said. Fuster, Williams, and Gonzalez were booked into jail. Attorney information wasn't available. The Transportation Security Administration holds its transportation security officers <laughs> to the highest professional and ethical standards and has no tolerance for misconduct in the workplace, a TSA boilerplate, I mean, a TSA spokesperson said in a statement Friday. We actively and aggressively investigated these allegations of misconduct and presented our findings to MDPD and are working closely with them. Any employee who fails to meet our fundamental ethical standards is held accountable. Travelers at MIA Friday say they were shocked. Shocked, I tell you, to hear the allegations. I still think it's funny that it's missing in action <laughs> airport. <laughs> I'm surprised, <laughs> kind of yeah. I still tend to trust security people and law enforcement, said one passenger. Uh, how do you bring people through and then you rob them while you were smiling at them? Ain't that a little weird to you? Asked another traveler. So, yeah. They're... <laughs> <laughs> It's just... Oh, my. Okay, well, what happened here? It, I mean, it that played... job pays well, too. Yeah. I mean, what uh. are you doing? Oh, dope are you? Well, here we are almost done, so let's head on into the Wonder Fooler. Mm-hmm. Here on Counterculture Wise, we may rant, we may rave. But most of all, we go against the current culture because we believe to the core of our beings that humans are good and the world is an amazing and beautiful place. At the beginning of our show, we give you news of the weird and wonderful, but that is just the tip of the magnificent iceberg that is our world. We now present news of the wonderfuller. So I put Jim in charge of this segment, and it is his life goal to try to find an article that will make me cry every stinking week. I gave so, you two this week, so I get to read one of them. So, so, so let's let's see if uh, Jim managed to find an article that's going to make me uh, cry. Because I don't know. If this you is what it turns into make Melanie cry. Is yeah, the, the, I don't the, think you make me cry more than I did at that darn movie yesterday. I don't think anything could make you cry more than a movie did. <laughs> you were just sobbing your little eyeballs mm-hmm. out, sobbing your pretty little blue eyeballs yeah, out. Yeah. A firefighter and his wife in Ocala, Florida, hey, we're still in Florida, man, yay, are sharing their movie-worthy adoption story. Vincent and Katie, who wish to only be identified by their first names for privacy reasons, appeared on today, June 29th, with their six-month-old daughter, Zoe. In January, Zoe was placed in a safe haven baby box at the fire station, where Vincent was working an overnight shift. The device allows someone to safely and anonymously surrender a child, no questions asked. When used, silent alarms are triggered to notify emergency responders in the building. It's absolutely terrifying that something like that needs to exist. Vincent recognized the sound immediately and went outside to investigate. Initially, he thought it was a false alarm, but when he opened the box, there was Zoe staring up at him. She was wrapped in a pink blanket. I picked her up. She wasn't crying, Vincent told today Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Koda? You don't have enough vowels in her, your Her name, name is, I, I pronounce Hoda it Hoda Kobe, and Hoda so Kobe? does she. Hoda Kobe? Yeah. Okay. That was it. Mm-hmm. I was in love with her. At the time, Vincent and Katie were desperate to become parents. They had been struggling for more than a decade, oh my goodness, to have a baby and were registered to adopt in the state of Florida. Vincent accompanied Zoe to the hospital for a mandatory examination and handed her over to the medical staff along with a handwritten letter in the note, Vincent explained why he and Katie wanted to adopt the baby and become her parents. They should have just taken her home and not said anything. <laughs> when Vincent called Katie to tell her about his night, she burst into tears. I was like, don't get too excited yet, Vincent recalled while speaking with Today.com earlier this morning. My biggest fear was that the note I wrote wouldn't stay with Zoe and she'd be gone. It was a very stressful few days. Zoe was placed in the station's safe haven baby box on January 2nd. By January 4th, she was home with Vincent and Katie. The adoption was later finalized in April, 
an emotional Zoom ceremony. That didn't take very long. Before you finalize, anything can happen, and we'd experienced that in the past. So when the judge said, you guys are a family, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, we're a family. Holy guacamole, we're a family. <laughs> so that was easily the best day of our lives. So then it describes Zoe's adoption story as divine destiny. God definitely put her in our lives and gave us the opportunity to adopt her. Vincent added that he often keeps Zoe up a little later than he should so he can rock her and stare at her a little longer. Probably one of my favorite things to do is just watch her, he said. Vincent and Katie are forever grateful for Zoe's birth mom who they have not been in contact with. We needed each other, Katie noted, and the way we were able to help each other was through that baby box. They want Zoe's birth mom to know the little girl is loved beyond words. That's the reason they're sharing their story publicly. It's not about me. It's not about my wife. It's not about our journey to have kids. It's about me being a first responder. It's about this beautiful little girl who was given the chance of life and that she's been adopted. She's loved and hopefully her birth mother sees it and recognizes that she did the right thing. She doesn't have to worry anymore. Her daughter's taken care of and is loved beyond words. There are 148 safe haven baby boxes in the United States and 31 babies have been safely surrendered according to the organization's website. Once authorities arrive, the newborn is removed from the box's bassinet and immediately taken to receive medical attention before being placed for adoption. Monica Kelsey, founder of the Safe Haven Baby Boxes, spoke at a press conference in January, the same day that Zoe was surrendered. We want to address the parents who legally surrendered this infant. And right now, I'm going to talk directly to her or him. Thank you. Thank you for keeping your child safe. Thank you for bringing your child to a place that you knew was going to take care of her. And thank you for doing what you felt was best. It always blows my mind when one of the pro-abortion arguments is that, you know, nobody would take care of the babies and, and that, you know, Christians talk a big game, but they don't care about children after they're born. It's like, do you know how many people are on a wait list to adopt children. Do you know how many? I mean, thousands and thousands of people, and, and you'd rather kill it than let it have a life. I hope little Zoe grows up to be amazing. This is a really sweet story. Well, I like veteran stories, so... I didn't cry. Meh. I saw you get emotional, though. It's almost... Okay, I'll give you half a point there. Verklempt. A 95-year-old veteran became the first person to dance at a newly reopened nightclub 74 years after meeting his wife there. Aww. Sprightly Kevin Topham took to the dance floor with his caregiver when Club X reopened after more than a decade in Nottinghamshire last weekend. I love weekend. that they have side-by-side -side pictures of when they first met and, and today. That's so sweet. Yeah. The granddad of one was adamant that he wanted to go back to the venue where he remembers meeting his bride, Molly, in the 1940s when it was known as the Corn Exchange, a hot spot for servicemen. It was during a Royal Air Force dance that the retired airman and oil rig worker wooed Molly before their happily married life with two children. Kevin noticed the venue was being reopened in his local newspaper and asked his part-time caregiver, Donna Harvey, whether she would take him dancing. Despite being warned that there would be booming music and, a stro and strobe lighting in a room full of 18-year-olds, the senior was undeterred. But Donna had a better plan and asked the club owner if they could come in early. He not only offered the dance floor, but gave the veteran his choice of music. Aww. Kevin was the first person to shuffle across the floor on Saturday night, July 1st, to the song <laughs> Chattanooga Choo Choo <laughs> by the Glenn Miller Orchestra. He, it was just amazing. That was a decent thing for that DJ to do. That was a very nice thing to do. It was just amazing. His face absolutely beamed on us. It melted my heart because it made him happy. All his memories came flooding back to him. He put on his medals and he talked about how all the American station nearby would come in and there would be fights over who would dance with the women. It was just so heartwarming. He hasn't stopped talking about it. Donna said Kevin had asked her what she was doing that coming Saturday and then explained he wanted to take her out dancing. I said, Kevin... It will be nothing like it was in 1949, but he just kept asking me about it. He was determined. I thought if I didn't take him, he's probably going to get in his car and go, which I didn't want him to do. <laughs> so when he's I was 94 and still <clears throat> driving, good for you. <laughs> so when I was down there and saw the door of the club open, I went to go and see the manager. 
There was no umming and awing. The managers just said to come bring him down at 8 p.m., and that's what we did. Kevin's daughter, Kev- Karen Mason, said her dad has always loved dancing and found the whole event quite emotional. Kevin even spun Donna around. The new owners care- clearly care for the community, not just the young people, but older members, too. They even put on a second slower song to close out the set. Aww. The English club has since said it was inspired by Kevin and is looking at introducing an over-60s event each month where they will play music from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And then there's there's a couple of videos of the dances. They didn't tell us what happened to his wife. I mean, well, I'm I I think it's safe to say that she has gone like to, to join the bleeding choir in Visibil. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to know. <laughs> Like yeah, I was hoping story. to find that out too, but no. It's a really sweet story. That's very, very sweet. sweet. And Maybe look at him for 94. Good yeah, gravy. He's a pretty good looking 94 year old. Yeah, he's all right. We'll, we'll have to watch the videos and see if maybe they mention it. So. All right. All right. Well, we laughed, we cried, we ranted. We didn't exactly snap. There were little snaplets here and there, but I would say overall, a pretty good show. I I give it an A plus, but I'm I'm a little prejudiced. biased. Yeah, a, well, a little biased. What do you say? I don't know. We do it again next week. I think that's a plan. All right. Well, I say we do it again next week, folks. Thank you so much for joining us, especially <clears throat> Dave and Nick in the chat, because you are my favorite boys in the chat ever. And yeah. we will see you uh, next week with lots more fun stuff. Counterculture Wise is a Stormcat production. Thank you for joining our growing family of listeners. All links from the show are available on our website, counterculturewise.com. Find our archives on any of your favorite podcast hosts. We engage in satire, commentary, and generally laugh at the ridiculousness of our crumbling society. Our only medical or financial advice is to not follow any financial or medical advice given by podcasters. Our animations, interviews, holy crap segment, and other videos are put out on BitChute and Rumble, and only in part on YouTube because they hate free speech. Our show is entirely funded by listeners like you. Visit our ever-expanding merch store or our Subscribestar, where you can get outtakes, extra videos, and sneak peeks. If you would like to be a guest on our program, feel free to contact us via our website, just click on the link at the top that says be a guest on our show for more fun and cat pics please visit our facebook twitter or instagram for complaints about our show please fill out the id 10t form on our website and we will give it the attention it deserves meanwhile no matter how cruel the world may be around you always remember the importance of kindness be kind to each other be kind to animals And be kind to yourself. See you you next next week. week.